looking at your hands and especially looking at your nails can tell you a lot about your health and certain conditions are more prone to causing nail changes and one of those conditions is celiac disease. So we're going to talk about certain nail findings that can occur in celiac disease. Before we talk about those nail findings, let's discuss what celiac disease is and some of its more common signs and symptoms. So celiac disease is also known as gluten sensitive enteropathy and celiac sprue. It is a gastrointestinal disease involving autoimmune destruction of small bowel mucosa, so that's the inner lining of the small intestine, that leads to malabsorption, so there's reduced absorption, and also changes in bowel habits. Now this inflammation is triggered by a gluten breakdown product known as gliadin, and the proximal small intestine, or the first part of the small intestine, is most commonly affected, and this is where certain nutrients are absorbed. We'll talk about that here in a moment. So some of the more common symptoms of celiac disease include abdominal pain, and abdominal pain generally is going to be associated with diarrhea, so there's changes in bowel habits, and then there's also going to be malabsorption, so there's reduced absorption and weight loss, and then the malabsorption is going to lead to nutrient deficiencies. Now because the proximal small intestine is going to be generally most affected, we're going to get certain nutrient deficiencies like iron, folate, calcium, and some others as well. We'll talk about these as we go through this lesson and how they can relate to changes in the nails. So one of the findings that we can see on the nails in patients who have celiac disease is what we call coilonychia. So coilonychia is a nail finding that is due to iron deficiency. Now we talked about the fact that patients with celiac disease can become iron deficient because they're not absorbing iron properly. So they can get certain nail findings and coilonychia is one of them. So coilonychia is spoon-shaped nails. If you were to take a look at this image here, you can see that they kind of resemble a spoon. So they're more concave and they're more indented. Now because coilonychia is due to an iron deficiency, it can occur with iron deficiency anemia. And celiac disease is not the only cause of coilonychia because other things can cause iron deficiencies. So anything that causes iron deficiencies in general can lead to coilonychia. So this is one potential finding we can see in some patients who have celiac disease. Now another potential nail finding is brittle nail syndrome. So this is also due to iron deficiency. So in brittle nail syndrome, we can get particular nail findings. One of those findings is what we call onychorexis. And more specifically, it refers to longitudinal ridging. So we get these lines that occur on the nails. This can occur in brittle nail syndrome. This is onychorexis. And we can also see something called onychoschizia, and this is essentially nail splitting. So you can see big chunks of nail kind of splitting. So this can all occur with brittle nail syndrome, which can be something that can occur in patients who have celiac disease. Now, the first three digits of the hands are going to be most commonly affected. So the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger are more likely to be affected, and then the toenails are more likely to be affected. So what we're going to see with brittle nail syndrome is increased nail plate fragility. So it's just more fragile, it's more brittle. So it's easily or more easily breakable. So chips and pieces are more likely to come off and also they're less likely to grow long. So you'll find that your nails are just not growing as long or as fast as they used to. And this can all be related to, again, brittle nail syndrome, which is due to iron deficiency anemia, which can occur in celiac disease. Now another potential nail finding is something called leukonychia. So leukonychia is actually due to a zinc deficiency. So we can get a zinc deficiency in celiac disease as well. And leukonychia is where we get these little white spots on the nail. So they can be little white spots or multiple spots on the nail and they can occur with varying sizes and number. And what we can often see is that they can be found on multiple nails. So you won't just see it on one nail, you'll see it on a couple nails at least. So this can be another finding that we can see in some patients with celiac disease. Now we can also see other nail findings as well, including what we call Moerke's nails or lines. So Moerke's nails or lines look like this. So if you were to look closely, you can see all these kind of white transverse bands that occur. This is a type of what we call transverse leukonychia. So not the leukonychia we just talked about where it's just little white spots, but this is where there's kind of transverse bands of white. So we can see it in these images here. Now what's important with this particular nail finding is that when the nails do grow out, these lines don't actually move. So they'll just stay in the same place. And it's because the lines are actually being caused by 
something underneath the nail. It's the nail bed. So what will happen is if you were to actually put pressure on the nail, you'll find that those lines, those white transverse bands, will disappear with pressure. Now this particular nail finding is due to what we call hypoalbuminemia, which is a low level of albumin in the blood. This is quite rare in celiac disease, and it's going to occur only in very severe untreated celiac disease. So this is where there's a lot of inflammation, so much so that patients are not even absorbing much amino acids at all for the liver to produce albumin. This is where albumin actually comes from. So we can see this particular nail finding occurring in liver conditions as well. Another nail finding we could see with celiac disease is what we call Mies lines. So this looks the same as the Muerkes lines we just talked about. So we get this white transverse bands that occur on the nail. And this too is also a type of transverse leukonychia. But the difference is that these lines move with nail growth. So as the nail grows out, you'll see that the lines also shift with the nail. And if you were to actually put pressure on the nail bed, they're not going to be blanchable. They're not going to disappear. So those are the differences between Muerkes lines and also Mises lines. This is very rare in celiac disease, but it can occur in some cases. Again, probably more severe cases. And we can also see nail clubbing in some patients with celiac disease. So if we were to look at normal nails, if you were to put your two index fingers together, what you should normally see is this little space in between called Shamroth's window. But with clubbing, there's a change in the nail and the finger shape to a point where if you were to put your two index fingers together, you actually lose Shamroth's window. So more specifically, nail clubbing is a clinical feature or physical sign involving a bulbous or bulging enlargement of the distal ends of the fingers and toes. So the distal ends are the tips of the fingers. So this is the tips of the index fingers here. And there's a bulbous enlargement of those tips of the fingers. And it changes the angulation of the nail. And it's likely due to some underlying swelling and growth of connective tissue. And again, that leads to that reduction in angulation of the nail with respect to the nail plate. So there's a change in angulation as you can see from this image on the left and compared to this image on the right. This too is also rare in celiac disease, but it is listed as something that can occur, and it may occur in more severe cases as well, or in more longer term cases that are not treated appropriately. Now with these particular nail findings, if you were to go on a gluten-free diet, you can see some of these nail findings completely resolve. Some of them that have been noted to resolve with a gluten-free diet include leukonychia, so that little white spot on the nails. Or we can see changes in how coilonychia can resolve or in how brittle nail syndrome can improve as you get on a gluten-free diet and you start to resolve some of those nutrient deficiencies. All of those can actually resolve with a gluten-free diet and especially for longer periods of time on a gluten-free diet. Please check out my full lesson on celiac disease if you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please consider joining as member for members only content. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.